Hi, today I want to talk to you about adding a rogue lino block in amongst the wood blocks with the print. Um, but before I show you how I'm going to go about integrating lino among the wood blocks, I just want to talk to you about this proof print. So here I've got a very rough proof print that I've taken. Now don't worry, I'm going to talk to you all about how to make a damp pack and get ready for printing and make rice paste and all that kind of stuff. But I have done a proof print here and I just wanted to show you this background area. We haven't got the wood grain in yet. I haven't got to that point where I'm putting the U plank into the into the mix. But it does give you a little bit of a feel for that brush cutting that I was doing in the last two films. And you can see, you know, the results here. And we'll look at that a bit more later. But to go back to the lino cut, when I did my proofing, I decided that the line block that we've already cut in the wood that I've shown you being cut just wasn't giving me enough detail. It was really nice, but I wanted more detail. So I decided that rather than try and cut another more detailed wood block in the sheen apply, which is a little bit tricky, I would go for lino. Now, in later films, I've got wood carving expert Will Francis coming and he carves cherry ply in the traditional Japanese way. And you'll see some really fine work with him. But I decided to opt for lino. So I want a lino block that's going to integrate with the wood blocks and fit into this area of the print. So the, what I, the way that I went about it was to go to my line block. So here on this piece of wood, I've got that detailed line block and I've got a tracing here, my original tracing. And I've already, as you can see, it's had a lot of action on it. So it's not actually giving me enough detail to use this tracing. So I needed to make another tracing, but I couldn't take the tracing off this one because when I cut the line block, I didn't stick to the tracing. I just went my own way. So the lines that are drawn on here are no longer relevant. So I couldn't use that tracing. So what I've done is I've taken some more tracing. Uh, this is tracing film and I have fitted it into the registration. So into those Kento points, I've lined it up in the Kento points to give me my registration. And I have got some carbon paper. Now this is, it's red carbon paper that came with the pack that I use. Um, it's, I mean, any color carbon would do. And all I've done is put the carbon between the wood block and the tracing paper. And I've used, um, used my ball bearing baron actually, it doesn't really matter, just to take a rubbing. And what it's left me with let me just peel this off and show you. So remember, I've got my registration because we know that those are in the right place to take a tracing off. What it's left me with is a new, effectively a new tracing. So I've got my registrations right. And now I've got all those lines that I freestyle cut away from the original tracing. And the next thing that I did was to go to my next tracing here. So this is the one that I did to make the lino block. And I just got myself a pen and I drew in the fresh detailed line block. So just sort of the shadow areas in the fine detail there. And I was able to then take that tracing and use carbon paper again to make a tracing onto lino. So let me show you what the lino looks like. I've already cut it. So here is my line block. Now I have cut this, but if you are interested in cutting fine detail in lino and things like that, look at my films in the Lino with Laura series. You'll see plenty of cutting of lino there. And um, you'll also see other films on this channel about cutting lino. So I've basically done exactly as I've done before. I've reversed my tracing. I've used carbon paper to transfer it. And I've also marked out the Kentos. 
Now, I could cut the Kentos in the lino, um, but I've decided against it. What I've done is I've used these little stick-on Kentos that I've shown you before, and they work really well. And to be honest, they're fine sitting there because when I come to print this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be inking up these areas here with my roller. So those are well away from this bit here, so they won't print. So what I've ended up with is a fine line block cut in lino with the right registration to print it alongside the rest of my wood blocks. So here I've got yet another rubbing with the red carbon paper and then I've printed the lino on top of that so I could check my registration. Now this is dry. I took my rubbing on dry paper and then I've printed my lino conventionally um, with ink over the top of it. When I come to do the actual printing with the Japanese wood blocks, the paper's going to be damp and it will have changed shape. I can't rely on printing, letting the paper dry and then printing my lino block. I'm going to have to print the lino block to fit the damp paper. And that's something I'm going to address in another film and explain to you how I'm going to do that. So for now, thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me for the next film in the series.